Chicago. Welcome to Community Post, a bi-weekly CAN TV program featuring our local leaders and organization that focuses on improving health and well-being in the fabulous city of Chicago. Community Post is presented by Fox Glove Alliance, a public health care coalition that is supported by the Hectone Institute of Medicine. It's also in partnership with Healthcare Council of Chicago, which is managed by Third Horizon Strategies, and of course the Hectone Nurses and the Humanities. My name is Takora Love. I am one of the rotating Community Pulse hosts. I represent Hectone Nurses and Humanities, an AMSN Chicago chapter. In celebration of Nurses Week, Community Post is pleased to highlight the significant role and the impact of the Hectone Nurses and Humanities in increasing the awareness of art and humanities. We are absolutely fortunate to have in this studio with us, Dr. Karen Flynn. Welcome, Dr. Flynn. Thank you for having yeah. me. I am so excited. Dr. Flynn is not only a guest on the show, she is a dear friend and a mentor. So I am besides myself with excitement. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and contain it so that <laughs> we can get the questions out. So I'm gonna introduce Dr. Flynn and we're gonna jump right in because we do wanna maximize our time while we have the phenomenal Dr. Flynn in the studio. Thank you. So Dr. Flynn is a Terrence and Karen home endowed professor. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what that means because that's a mouthful. Um, she works in the Department of Population Health, Nursing Sciences at the University of Illinois Chicago College of Nursing. She is also the director of the Midwest Nursing History Research Center, which is what we're really gonna focus on today because I'm telling you, Chicago, you are in for an absolute treat when you learn about the traveling museum that we have. Dr. Flynn's research lies at the intersection of black feminists and diaspora studies, health and care work, nursing history, transnational mobilities with keen attention to race, gender, and equity. Her award-winning book, Moving Beyond Borders, Black Canadian, and Caribbean Women in the African Canadian Diaspora. Ah, I happen to have a copy, which <laughs> I definitely will need to get autographed. Um, so Dr. Flynn, again, it is an absolute honor to have you here. And it is a, a pleasure to be here and you know, anything for you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. So Karen, can you just tell us how you became interested in studying nursing or just give us a little background um, Oh, yeah, on your history and the things that you've done. Okay, so I, um, as you know, I'm a Canadian citizen and I started a master's degree at the University of Windsor, um, border of Detroit um, in Ontario. And I was always interested in women and work. Mm. But most of the scholarship at the time really focused on African-American, um, African-American women. And I wanted to get a sense of what was happening in Canada. Mm -hmm. So I started some preliminary research and I discovered that um, after World War II, that Canada had recruited nurses from the Caribbean mm -hmm. to work in Canada to alleviate the nursing shortage. And so that mm -hmm. is one, yes, so I was like, wow. And then I discovered that, um, I mean, I knew some of this, but you know, it became more apparent to, yes. me, to me after a few, like, in-depth studies. So uh, as most folks will know, the Caribbean was colonized by Britain. Yes. And so they also recruited a ton of Caribbean nurses to work in Britain post-World War II because, you know, they had changed, um, transformed their healthcare system yes. to what we now call the National Healthcare Service. And in fact, folks will argue that Caribbean people saved the national healthcare system. And so, it's, so yeah, so I, I discovered that, um, yeah, that, you know, the Car Canada, the country that I lived in, had really recruited these nurses. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then it made sense to me why, right, at church. So I'm, um, I'm Seventh-day Adventist and, mm -hmm. I remember just also sitting in the balcony of, uh, you know, this church and they would all, they often have um, in the bulletin, no one uses bulletins anymore. <laughs> I remember those. You know, because everything, I remember those. <laughs> remember those bulletins, right? And they would have a church on duty, I mean, a nurse rather, mm -hmm. on duty. And it became apparent to me that also um, 
the significance of nurses in the community on Sabbath, yes. right? They would be caring for, for folks, but also at funerals would mm -hmm. have nurses. And so that kind of, um, you know, piqued my interest. And I had a, um, a supervisor, um, which we call supervisor, my master's thesis supervisor, and I said, you know, I really want to do this work. And I remember her saying to me, I think she bore this line from Toni Morrison, you know, that if you want to see your history, you really have to write it. You have to write it. Yes. You have to write it. Oh, that, I mean, you take me way back when you talk about, like, the bullets in the church. <laughs> right. I think, like, historically, like, nurses, you know, and have always had, like, unofficial nursing roles, yes. right? Yeah. And yes. I, I think in your project, you talk a lot about this, how... You didn't necessarily have to have the schooling for nurses historically. Right. Yeah. It was the training. Yes. So within the community, the nurses who delivered babies or cared right. for the sick yes. and the wounded yes. and things yes. like that. Yeah. You didn't necessarily have training. Yes. You know, it was that unofficial training. Absolutely. So when you, you talk about in the church, yeah. it's it's similar as well. Yes. So yeah. we'll, we'll take a deep dive into that. Yes. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I have to say, so we're gonna, you're the co PI of the Mapping Care, History of Black Nurses Project. Mm -hmm. um, I am always, always fascinated. Every time I see this presentation and get a chance to see the Mobile Museum, can you tell our audience a little bit about the project? Absolutely. So as most of you are aware, um, the in conjunction with, you know, the, the um, pandemic, mm -hmm. the pandemic and the issues around George Floyd. Mm -hmm. um, my colleague and friend, Gwyneth Frank, mm -hmm. um, started to kind of think about, um, you know, think about nurses' role within the pandemic, but also the absence of um, black and other racialized mm -hmm. nurses within the Midwest History Nursing Research Center, mm -hmm. right? So in other words, it's pretty white. Mm -hmm. And so, um, she decided that she would apply for this grant and, um, and she, from the Donnelly Foundation, and she asked me uh, to be the co-PI. Mm -hmm. And so we were awarded that grant, and the purpose of the grant was to document the history of black nurses in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Right. So, of course, we know a bit about, you know, Provident Hospital. Yes. Daniel, um, Dr. William Hale. And we know about, you know, sort of, you know, Emma Reynolds. Right. Right. And the fact that she wanted to um, to be a nurse. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we know about the exclusionary policies in Chicago, which I think in a lot of ways surprise often a surprise lot. people, yes, right? It does. Absolutely. So back to our project. So part of that is we wanted to to really learn more about the contributions of black nurses, black women to the broader Chicago mm -hmm. history, but also sh nursing history in Chicago. Mm. And so um yes, and so I became the co-PI on the grant. Yeah, it was so, like, when I knew I wanted to become a nurse, like, my parents, they, they're always, if you want to do something, know the history of it. Absolutely. Every time we brought something up, you know, we had to do a book report. We had to present them with something, same way I do to my kids nowadays. <laughs> right. Um, but I had to learn the history yes. of black nurses, yes. right? Um, it wasn't something that was taught in my nursing program. I knew going in, you know, who uh, Eliza Mahoney was. I knew Mary Seacole. I knew those things. But for majority people, yeah. you know, it's not something that's taught. You know, Florence Nightingale is taught. So I think one of the things that the project really does is bring awareness to the contribution historically, but also right now today. Yes. The pioneers, the trailblazers yes. that yes. we have. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. very inspiring. I was able to attend on opening night at one of the local libraries. And many of the women that are in that video who were interviewed were there. Yes. And yes. you know, I felt like I was standing on the shoulders of giants. Like yes. it was so moving. Like I was literally in tears and I yes. just had to take a moment. Um, yeah. Cause I think about like my aunt and I watched my grandmother when they donned their white, you know, back in those yes. days, of yes. course it was right. all white yeah, for nursing. Course. Yeah. And those caps, those nursing caps, and I'm almost tearing up now, you know, because back then it was pride. 
you know, Absolutely. that that you were able yes. to function, you know, in that role. Yeah. So seeing them, I can I can go back to eight and a half years old, knowing right then and there that I wanted to become a nurse. Right. You know, yeah. watching them and then my mother, although she's not a nurse by trade, you know, she's very altruistic. Like she took care of everybody in the neighborhood. Yes. yes. All family yeah. members. Yes. So yeah. like that innate ability was already instilled in me. Yes. And I never wavered. Right. from wanting to be a nurse. Yes. Um, yeah. And then and to this day, like even when I teach, I add those pieces in, yes. you know, yes. for every, yes. you know, nationality, yeah. um, it is important to know your history. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I also, I mean, and I would add to that, um, that the, when we think about the racial, U.S. racial formation, mm -hmm. and we think about the North, there's a particular way in which the North mm and the Midwest configures in our mind, right? As the place that, you know, blacks enslaved um, and free blacks moved to for mm. a better life, right? You know, the trope of a better life. They moved to these places. And certainly it is better than bondage. It was better than Jim Crow. But what folks, appears to me anyway, that what people fail to realize that while de jure segregation existed in the South, mm -hmm. de facto segregation mm. existed wow. in, in, in places like Chicago. Mm -hmm. So why is it that Emma Reynolds applied to every nursing school yes. and was not allowed? Not allowed. Right, and I think so we have to think about, and when we talk about the history and the continuities, you know, we think about nursing today. Mm -hmm. It's still very much predominantly white mm -hmm. in terms of RNs, like yes. registered nurses, in terms of nurses in leadership, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so we yes. see those kinds of continuities. So this is why this history is important. It right? is. Knowing that history and then looking at, okay, so what have, what are, what, yes, we have made incredible strides. Yes. Okay, no doubt. There's mm -hmm. absolutely no doubt. But there's still some, some, some. There's a lot of work to be done. A lot of work to be done. Lots yes. of work to be yes. done. Yeah. So when you were doing the project, what was the experience like when you were able to interview some of the black nurses from Chicago, one, but then two, in the process, learning all of the adversity and the challenges that we faced then and we continue to face right. now. So as you well, so in ter so I, I you know I have a lot of experience interviewing, right? Mm -hmm. um, one because I interviewed thirty five folks yes. um, for this book, and so for me um, it was an uh, incredible experience. Uh, because yes, I've read um, Darlene Clark Hines' book, you know, mm -hmm. Black Women in White. Yes, and we've, you know, I've read, uh, you know, a, a lot of the scholarship because I, you know, I consider myself an interdisciplinary scholar. So, I mean, I am an interdisciplinary scholar. So, and I do the African diaspora. So, you mm -hmm. know, I've read about nurses yes. in, you know, in South Africa, like apartheid South Africa, mm -hmm. right? So, I have some broad knowledge about nurse, black nurses. But to actually, so it's one thing to kind of read and have some theoretical um, understanding, mm -hmm. but to actually sit yes. and talk to people, right? These folks who, in fact, integrated, um, you know, Chicago yes. nursing schools. Yes. And to hear their experiences was just inc incredible, yes. right? There's nothing like having a conversation with someone. And, and then, you know, a lot of times people don't always, re you know, when I ask certain questions, they're like, oh, they hadn't thought about, yes. you know, something, to, the, you know, in terms of the memory, right? And what, 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 you know, essentially what they were, you know, what people mm -hmm. remember. And, and then it's not always, um, and then it's not all, I mean, sometimes, um, you know, there's, there's also sadness, right? It, it, yes. There's also, and I think um, with, the, with memory, and in particular in this moment, these nurses are successful, as you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's hard to actually, you know, think back to those moments and the struggles and the adversities because sometimes our success sort of, you know, um, in some ways, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Mm. We prefer to live in the moment, in the moment. yes, wh where we've where, where we've arrived, yes, right, yes. And so I want to tell you a story. Mm -hmm. um, you know that when I think about um, these nurses and sometimes the reluctance to talk about the pain, and mm. some people did, but some mm. people were you know yeah, reluctant to to do so. And so in my um, in my book, I mentioned. Um, 
uh, um, this woman who, and this is a, a, a Canadian um, example, because, you know, we have some similarities. Yes, even yes, though, we're going to talk know, about even that. Even though Canada is like, oh, no, we're not like the United States. <laughs> we're not like those people over there. So anyway, um, and, and, and this is actually later in my career that I started to think about what it must be like for these nurses, mm. right, to apply to nursing schools over and over again and to be rejected. Be rejected. Because we often don't talk about black women black women's pain, yes. right? Okay, so Are we often talk about, you know, we talk about, you know, how, you know, how we survive, which is, there's nothing wrong with that, our agency, all of that. So back to, so this woman um, had applied to Toronto General Hospital in, the, in about the 40s, and, um, you know, she told them that, you know, she was black, and the Toronto General Hospital says, well, you know, we don't accept Negroes. So um, her father, so there's this letter that my um, supervisor, Captain McPherson, had given to me. So we assumed that this really was sort of a test case, right? Mm. So the dad, we later find out, was a part of, you know, Marcus Garvey, the United Negro Improvement Association. And so we're like, oh, it was just a test case. For the longest time, about 20 years, I thought that this person was a test case. I didn't think that she was a real person. Wow. And one night I'm doing, um, you know, I was um, a keynote for the Ontario Nurses Association and um, Ona. And I don't know, I just decided, I think I found her name, mm -hmm. right? That I looked up the more and some deep dive on the internet and I found that Thelma Moore is actually a real person. Who had a that real, experience. Yes but wow. who left Canada and never became a nurse. Like she became a baker or mm. something to that effect, right? So wow. there's this letter from her father writing saying, you know, I'm a taxpayer, you know, I'm paying taxes in Canada and you're telling me my daughter, because this was the response to Canada, right? Well, just go to the United States. That was the response of nursing schools, right? Mm. And so I started to then re, to, to start to think about being 17, right? Because, mm. you know, I was taking, I'm taking some of this stuff for granted. Right? As we all do. And then Absolutely. I sort of think about what it was, what was it like for all these young black women in the Canadian context, right? Or here now. Or here, just right, the same. To be told that you, you, five, six, seven, eight nursing schools and everybody says no. Mm. But we don't have, right? So we don't really, we don't have insight into, into that, into that experience. Right. And so what we have to do is to sort of imagine what, think about rejection mm -hmm. and think about what it was like for those women. Yes. Right. Yes. And, and, it's, and really, and I think what the goal here to do is to unpack really sort of this idea of black women as, you know, as super women, right. And, and think about teenagers, mm. young women, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm hoping, you know, and I know that you guys definitely, you know, have your objectives and goals, but the more and more that the, the museum is showcased, hoping that it provides empowerment and hope Absolutely. to the people who see this, yes. to see this exhibit, yes. but also see like you and I see the representation and then decide to move forward. You know, I think that we're charged with sparking or right. igniting that yes. and showing them that, you know, it can be done. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And absolutely. There's going to be barriers. Yes. Right. Yes. But go over, go around, go over. Right. Any of those yes. barriers to yeah. get to the yeah. goal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because so. I do think, um, particularly in this historical moment with all that is going on, um, that I think th this the Chicago Black History Nurses, you know, mapping care project. I think it is inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, but oftentimes, when we think about when we so we talk about Provident Hospital for the most part, it really the emphasis on the founders, right? Yes, um, this, you know this is the very first true. Black, very first, true. first black hospital, which is amazing and wonderful, right? right? Um, but less so about those nurses who were, you know, who 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 were yeah. who were trailblazers, who were the first class, mm -hmm. right? You know, what was that like for them? Yes. You, do, yes. do you know what I mean? Yes. And so, um, and this is not to suggest that we don't talk about the institutions or the founders. I think that we need a much more um, comprehensive history of, of um, sort of thinking in this large, thinking about healthcare in general and medical institutions and really center nurses, right? Because one of the things, and you've heard me say this, um, when we think of in any healthcare system in the world, Nurses constitute the majority of the workers. Yes, yes, no. And the major, what we don't, they don't, we, I'm not a nurse, but you don't get the majority of the attention. 
Yes. Yeah. No, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. Where can it's okay? Where can Chicagoans see the museum, and then where can they go? Because it's actually um, online. Yes, that they can yes. actually take so a journey yes. through time. Yes, right. So, um, so we have exhibit. We have an exhibit that's like a traveling exhibit, and Love we've it. been all over um, Chicago. And I really sort of I, one of the things that I would like to see is for young people. Yes, more young yes. people. Oh, I agree. Students, right? Yes. Seeing the exhibit. But if you have um, time on your hands, you um, and I hope you want to check this out. So this is this is where you can find um, this is where you can find our digital exhibit. It's www.mappingcare.digital.uic.edu. Again, www.mappingcare.digital.uic.edu. And if you want to do all of that, you can just do a Google search on mapping care and it will show up. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I actually spent some time, although I've seen the travel and exhibit, um, I took time to do that digital exhibit mm -hmm. and Isn't amazing? the black and white photography yeah. of, you yeah. know, African American black nurses, you know, in in their attire, the cap, and it was just yeah. so, so yeah. very yeah. inspiring. Yeah. yeah. Um, what is the future? What's the next step for? The traveling museum, or it may be another exhibit. Right. That I to use. Yeah. I. Uh, so I. There's still work that needs yes. to be done. Yes. There are still nurses here mm -hmm. in Chicago that needs to be a part of the project. Yes. Right. So we need to figure out a way because we need some funding. Right. Um, to to interview those nurses, mm -hmm. especially um, our elderly nurses, yes, um, because time waits for no one, right? Absolutely. And so we want to preserve their history. So there are nurses. I still have, you know, we have a list of of um, of nurses um, that we still want to interview. And in fact, this young gentleman, I forgot his name, um, the first. Um, um, man to graduate with a PhD UIC nursing is a black man and I would uh, like Mr. to Harold. Mr. Harold, yes, mm -hmm. thank you. And I would mm -hmm. like to interview him as well. Because yes. you know his memory is fresh. Yes, right? yes, yes, get, yes. His memory is fresh. <laughs> so we gotta get to him. So we just gotta figure out the log logistics. I may have to also like train some folks yes. how to do interviews. Because oh. I like to do them myself. Yes. But it's just the time just constraints will not will not certain. allow. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I definitely think we're going to have to do a part two of this because I okay. have so many more questions yes. and I'm sure like you have yeah. much more to present. Yeah. But Chicago, we really want to take the time to thank you and encourage you to take a moment to look at the digital exhibit yes. as well as go to the you know website. You can also see where that traveling exhibit is going yeah. to be. Yes. I promise you it is something that is so powerful. You will remember that moment. Yes. So thank you very yes. much, Chicago. Thank you, Can TV Studio. Thank you, Nonprofit Channel 21. Yes. And thank you, Dr. Karen Flynn. We really appreciate you sharing your knowledge, expertise, and everything that you've done for the nursing profession. We thank you. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me. You're welcome. Have a good Bye. day, Chicago.